Welcome to Module 10. In this part, we'll talk about the Web Parameter Delimiter vulnerability. This vulnerability occurs where a website utilizes a simple text file instead of a database for storing data server-side, and where the text file separates data with a specified delimiter. If the user provided data logged to the file is not properly filtered, an attacker may be able to tamper with the structure of the database and as a result change the interpretation of the stored data. Take a look at this sample code of a website designed to illustrate the problem. You can see here an example of a database file. The first field in the database represents username. The second field represents password. The third, email address. And the fourth field specifies a user type, a user with administrator privileges or normal user. Now let's take a look at a file used for registration in the service. As we can see, a simple form is displayed for user-provided data. Next, a file is open and the input is written to it. The data is separated with the same delimiter we've previously seen in our database. Finally, the field normal is added, which specifies the user has normal privileges. You can also see here a login script, which loads the entered login and password. You can also see here a login script which loads the entered login and password. If the following login and passwords are entered, a database file will open. The file will be separated into more lines via the file function. The function explode separates each file line into different fields. The login and password provided by a user are compared against the stored credentials. And if matching data is found in a line, an appropriate message will be displayed. Next, user type is verified and reported. Let's see how this works in practice. You can see here a login form. Enter the login and password of an existing user. As we can see, the user administrator is logged in and recognized as a user with administrator rights. Let's try to register a new user. Use regular for the username and user for the password. The registration has been completed successfully. Let's take a look at our database now. As we can see here, the information we entered into the browser has been added to the database. Let's try to log in now. As we can see, the login is successful. Now let's go back to the registration form. And try to make use of our knowledge about the used delimiter and the database structure. Register the user hacker with the password hack. and the following email address. Add the delimiter character and type in next to it the marker which specifies administrator account. The registration is successful. Let's see what our database looks like now. As we can see, the data in the first fields has been logged normally. 
but other fields contain the added delimiter and injected administrator identifier. As we see that index PHP only loads the first four fields, this probably means that the record will represent a user with administrator privileges. Let's try to see if this is true. As we can see, the user is logged in and has administrator privileges. How can we protect ourselves against this attack? The core of the problem lies in the fact that input may contain an injected delimiter, which is used in our database. This could be solved by adding the strreplace function, which serves to delete all delimiters from user input. Let's register a second user now. Use the prepared string. Let's take a look at the database now. As we can see, the delimiter has been cut out and the structure of the database has not changed. In order to confirm this, log into the service. As we can see, the attack has failed this time. That's all in Module 10. In the next module, we'll focus on PHP injection. See you there.